before we get the seam prepped for end cloth, I'm going to show you the animation that I'm going to be testing my simulations on. It's a next stretch animation with a few hops right after, about four jumps. The quick movement with those jumps is really going to show us how well the cloth is going to work with fast actions. I'm going to start by hiding the original clothing meshes. We don't need them until the proxy meshes start simulating correctly. So I'm gonna come over here into the display layer and hide the jean shorts and the jacket. The next thing I'm going to do is give myself a little cushion to allow the end cloth to settle before the animation starts. So for this character, I have the A pose at minus 20. So I'm going to give myself 35 frames in the negative direction. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to allow the end cloth to start simulating at minus 30 and my A pose starts at minus 20 right there. If I select all my keys for this character, it starts right there. And I'm going to give my character 20 frames to get into the A pose before the animation sequence starts. I've decided to deal with one article of clothing at a time. It uh, computes better. I did some tests and it just, having to deal with both of them at the same time is a bit much. I'm going to start by importing my proxy mesh for the jacket. We'll file, import, go to its location, and cloth simulation meshes, and bring the jacket in. Okay, it's gonna get this default surface shader, probably because I have it somewhere in my scene. I'm gonna just right click and assign it the default Lambert shader. First thing I wanna make sure before I start playing with end cloth is I want to make sure cached playback is off. I don't want it caching animations while I'm testing simulations. Typical workflow I'm going to go with is I'm gonna make sure the jacket is working and then I'm gonna cache it with end cloth cache system. I don't really need this. This produces some weird hiccups as you try to loop the playback. So turn off cache playback. Next, I'm going to talk about what's gonna be end cloth and what's gonna be a passive collider. Let me hide the simulation mesh. There is a mesh top underneath this jacket. It's really dense. I am not going to be using this dense version. There is a low res version that this dense version is skin wrapped to. So I'm going to show you where it's at. I'm gonna select my body settings and turn off that low res mesh. And I'm gonna turn off the actual mesh top that it's controlling. So this is the cheaper version that has been skinned. And this is where I want collisions to be happening on with the end cloth system. So it's going to be the body, this mesh top, and the head is a separate piece. So all these are going to be passive colliders. I don't really care about these leggings, they're skin wrapped. When we get to the shorts, if the shorts are penetrating them, I'll just increase the collision thickness so that it at least recognizes that area and doesn't allow the shorts to penetrate with the leggings. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm going to rename this jacket uh, simulation mesh. I already put it on a layer here, so I can turn it on and off, but I'm gonna call it jacket and cloth sim cloth mesh, or just geo, okay. Now I'm going to select the jacket, go into the FX menu, make sure I have no history. Just to be safe, I'm gonna come over here and delete history. I know I already did that before I brought it in here, but it's gonna be safe. Delete history, freeze transforms. Okay, so I go to the FX menu, go to end cloth and create end cloth. I want a new solver and I want local space. I'm gonna use local space for this project. It's the more common option. This is for if you want a separate uh, end cloth node from your input mesh, something along those lines. So I'm going to hit create. Okay. So I have end cloth jacket. Now I'm going to select the body, the underlying proxy mesh that controls the main mesh and the head. I'm going to go end cloth and I'm going to make them passive colliders. And they're going to use the nucleus solver that's already been created from the first end cloth development. So now I'm going to go make collide. And before I get started, I'm going to go into the nucleus, go into the attribute editor come down here to time attributes 
And as I said, I gave myself a 35 frame cushion, but I want end clock to start simulating at frame negative 30. So the start frame here, I'm going to set that to negative 30. All right, let's give it a test and see what we get initially. I'm going to hit play. Make sure cache playback is off. Hit play. Okay, so it's going to give some type of a simulation. What I'm going to do now, since this isn't really real time, is I'm going to go back and then I'm going to run a play blast, pause the video and then come back when I have the finished play blast. I have a few cameras here, uh, back view, a front view and a perspective side. So I'm going to render all three of them. I'll come back and then we can see what our first simulation with the default end settings look like. All right. So what I'm actually going to do is just go right click, play blast, go into play blast options. I want an AVI. Uh, I'll go with a hundred quality and yeah, I'll use the render settings. I think I have pretty high okay just 1080p so that should be fine i might just use the render window so that it doesn't take too long but i'm going to go do the render and come back and then scale is going to be one all right so i'm going to pause the video render and come back so we can talk about what the first simulation with the default end settings looks like okay the play blasts are done let's take a look it's the front view yeah it's pretty bad you will never get a good simulation on the first try unless you're just simulating a plane, I guess, colliding with a simple primitive. It's good that I also picked this um, really busy animation because it's going to be challenging to get it to behave properly. Before I start tweaking end cloth settings, I want to mention that I don't want too much articulation of the clothing for this character. At no point in time do I want the jacket or shorts to move so much that they draw away from a focal point that I'm trying to establish. For this reason, you are going to see me go with settings that limit granular movement. If we think of the detail breakdown of the simulation as primary, secondary and tertiary, I want mostly primary and a small amount of secondary movement. No tertiary movement at all. And this is not only because I'm dealing with a leather jacket and denim shorts, which deform very stiffly. Even if I had lighter clothing materials that articulate a lot looser, I would still be trying to avoid too much tertiary articulation of the cloth. Think of it as simplification in design and movement. Simplification is very important when it comes to stylized or cartoon animation. Here is an example of the hand keyed clothing animation that this new end cloth system is going to replace. Also very simple. Okay, let's get started tweaking the settings. The first set of settings that I'm going to change to help this varsity jacket behave more like a varsity jacket is the stretch, compression, and bend resistance. I don't want the faces of this jacket to compress or stretch. A real varsity jacket would not do any of those things. The material wouldn't be, it's not stretchable or compressible, but I do expect a good degree of bending. However, after doing some tests, I realized that setting all these to the same value works very well for me. So I'm going to crank these three values up to 1000. I should show you what I get. And the second issue I'm going to address from what we watched was how the jacket could barely stay on her. It was, by the end of the animation, had completely slid off her body. And that is due to the friction values of all the end cloth objects interacting with each other. So what I'm going to do is go into the collision settings and set the friction of all the end cloth objects to one. So I'm gonna max them out, at one for the varsity jacket, one for the head, the underlying, mesh top and the body so i'm going to run a play blast and it's going to take a while to get all three so i'll come back with the finished result so we can take a look at that let's take a look at the result 
as you can see the jacket is doing a better job staying in place it's not sliding off the character because of the hiked up friction values and it's also not stretching out of its natural shape you will notice that at the beginning during those 35 frames where it's trying to cushion the cloth looks like it's misbehaving but as soon as the time slider gets to zero it starts respecting the collision of the passive colliders and the attire shoots out to the surface if you notice even though now it's simulating better it's really producing some really bad distortions when there's very quick movement so much so that it almost collapses into itself and you start to see the other side of the single-sided geometry this is going to be a problem it's too distracting right it's just really folding into itself when things get really quick the way i'm going to resolve that is with dampening so i'm going to get back into the scene go down here to the dampening value and this is going to stop it from whipping through the air so freely and taking on all these shapes and almost getting these really aggressive angles and bends that make it not look too good so I'm going to crank the dampening up to 50 and I'll be back with the play bass so we can take a look at it all right let's take a look at the finished result It's definitely a lot better. It's looking a lot more like uh, the hand keyed animation. There's not too much distortion in this central part. So that's really good. I think this is a good starting point. I expect to make changes to the end cloth settings depending on the animation that i'm simulating so these values may be tweaked to work for other animations but for the most part it's going to be the default it's compression stretch and bend resistance at a thousand all friction set to one and a dampening value of 50. now it's time to attach our original clothing models to this end cloth proxy so i'm going to go back into the channel editor so I can gain access to the display layers and turn on the jacket. Okay. If you remember when we stripped this jacket, there were a few things that I didn't touch. There are a few relationships that I didn't touch. Uh, these, I said, these buttons are being held in place. The buttons and the receivers are being held in place by a proximity pin. And this is skin wrapped to the jacket. So I'm going to select, let me find my simulation mesh also i need my end cloth mesh so i'm going to select everything on this layer select all objects and i'm going to select my end cloth mesh and isolate them make sure i actually have the end cloth for no it looks like i have the end cloth node selected i should be looking for this okay so i'm going to select the jacket that's our simulatable jacket and right click on the isolation tool and say add selected object okay so now it's in here okay so i'm going to start with the body i'm going to take the body select simulation mesh go to the rigging menu go to deform wrap deform options I'm going to use the default settings, edit, reset settings. This is auto weight threshold. It will do a good job of approximating uh, how the influencing wrap object is going to affect the geometry. This usually works fine. If it doesn't and you need a better approximation, you can use the manual weight threshold and set your own max distance. The way to make it really simulate at the highest quality is to set max distance to zero or something closer to zero and that might really slow down simulation time an exclusive bind is like a more rigid bind it will try to attach one point from the influencing object to one point on the influenced object it's usually best when the both meshes have the same topology so this is what i'm going to use auto threshold 
So I'm going to hit apply. And just run a quick test by just hitting play to see how it's going to, whether or not it's uh, done a, even a remotely good wrap. I'm going to wait for it to start getting to, if you remember, it misbehaves all the way up until the collision meshes start moving. So that's the misbehavior we're getting here. Wait to see what happens when we get past minus 20, which is where the animation starts. Yep, and it should now straighten out and start behaving a lot better. Yep, so it's gonna behave. Yep, there it is. Pretty good approximation. All right, so I'm going to stop it because it's looking really nice. It's going to simulate well. I'm going to stop that. And our wrap of the K to the jacket is also working well. So let's attach the rest of the objects. I'm going to grab this, the collar, grab our kit, grab our simulation mesh, hit apply. Grab uh, this piece here, grab our simulation mesh, hit apply. Grab the sleeves, simulation mesh, hit apply. And then the last thing is the ribbing here. Grab that, grab the simulation mesh and apply. Now, before I simulate, there's one more thing I'm going to do just to avoid a uh, visual uh, error. This sleeve here, it doesn't have a thickness like these other meshes. It is, um, it's been intruded and it's only single sided. And now I don't want these intruded edges to ever show up on the surface uh, during simulation because this Raptor form has definitely assigned them to our simulation mesh and it's going to deform it in a way that might make it come to the surface. So in order to avoid it showing up in a render because you don't need it, I'm going to select all those edge loops. So I'm gonna select from here, double click to select the loop do the same thing on the other side. Actually, what I'm gonna do is turn on symmetry so we could do it, do it to both sides at the same time. I'm gonna select this, double click. Yeah, it has both of them selected. And I'm gonna go period, uh, sorry, shift period to grow the selection to about there. And then I'm going to assign it a transparent material that I have in my scene. I'll show you what the material looks like. So I'll say assign existing material and I call it the foot hider. It hides the foot when I don't want to see it. Uh, the foot, the part of the foot that's in the sneaker. So I'll go assign and I'll just show you what it looks like. It's just a simple surface shader there and its transparency has been hiked. Our transparency has been hiked up. So basically we'll just make sure this doesn't show up in the render. All right, so they should both be good. And now it's time to run a play blast and see what the final uh, influence looks like. I forgot to bind one more piece. It's this one, the ribbing at the base. So select that, select the end cloth geo, go to form, wrap and bind. So I'm gonna pause the video, come back when the play blast is done and then we're close to finishing the jacket simulation. One more thing. I forgot to hide the mesh, so we don't need to see this mesh anymore. So I'm going to go here into the outliner, hit Control H, hide it. Okay, so I'll be right back with the play blast. So here is the final simulation. The final mesh for the jacket is low res geometry that relies on a displacement map at render time. That is why you see all this faceting, but it looks pretty good. The final result is a lot busier than my hand keyed version, but the simulation is more accurate than what I conceived in my hand keyed version. I have a dance animation production project that I will be starting in a few days. I will be using this character in that course. I have a workflow that will help me to take more control of the clothing while they simulate. It's a brute force method of keying and cloth transform constraints to get any part of the simulation where you want it, when you want it there. If you are interested, subscribe and keep an eye out for it.
One thing I should also mention is that this character is set to real world scale. She's about 5 feet 8 inches tall and it looks like the default and cloth settings work well. If your model is not set to real world scale, if you have a significantly smaller or larger disparity from real world scale, you may have to play with the end cloth's mass setting to get an accurate simulation that fits your scene. One of the final things I would like to do before hiking up the simulation settings and caching the final result is to take control of the ribbing at the forearm. I want it to stick to the forearm so it doesn't slide up or down the arm too far. I can use end cloths point to surface constraint for that. To create the point to surface constraint, I'm going to go back to my perspective camera and hide my original end cloth mesh and I'll isolate it along with the body. Actually, I'm going to isolate it by itself first. Select the jacket. Now I'm going to select the last row on either side. And it looks like symmetry is on, so I have it's going to do it on both sides. And I'm going to grow the selection with a shift and period to about there. That's about a good point. Then I'm going to control right click and go to vertices. All right, so I should have both of them selected. Bring the entire body back, select the body, go to my FX menu, and go to end cloth, sorry, end cloth constraints, and now uh, point to surface constraint. All right, and just go create. Okay, now I'm gonna hide it, play blast, and come back so we can take a look at the final result. So here's the final result with the ribbing point to surface constraint to the body. And I like how it's behaving now. It's not doing that much moving, which is how this would sort of fit when you yank up your sleeve like that. It's pretty taunt and it shouldn't be flying all over the place. There are some weird artifacts sometimes that are happening when uh, the end cloth feels like it's trapped. So I need to find a solution for that. When I crank up the sub steps and max collision settings, I'll see what impact it has on that. Okay. So that's it for the jacket. For now, I'm going to go into Maya, crank up the solver settings to some really good numbers, and then cash out the animation for the jacket so that it can be playing whilst I'm working on the shorts. Okay, so I'm in Maya now. I'm going to go to my perspective camera, grab the end cloth, the nucleus, I'm sorry and then go to sub steps and I'm going to crank it up to 10 and 10 and then it's going to take quite a while so I'm going to cache it with the end clock caching system it's end cache create new cache and so I'm going to only going to make it one file I don't want one file per frame and I'm going to start and then in the next lesson you'll get to see it playing at the high solver settings that I set it at and we can get started with the shorts. This video is getting too long. So I'll see you in the next lesson where we set up the shorts to simulate just like we did for the jacket.